Hi all, welcome to my channel, welcome to my world, to the world of Wayne. Big smile on my face because we're now starting pack one of Agora Models Build Your Own Shelby Cobra. So we're going to be building the 1965 Shelby Cobra 427 competition. I'm glad I'm holding this up because this is the first thing I noticed when I opened the box there. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to put a link down here to Agora Models where you can order this for yourself. I'm also going to put a link to the video up here which gives give you a little bit more detail about the uh, Shelby Cobra and this build. Uh, I have done a prototype video and I put that in the playlist as well. So you can see what the finished models kind of going to look like. But believe me that was a prototype. What we got here is the real thing. Now, if you haven't seen the Cobra before, it is featured quite heavily in the film Ford vs. Ferrari. And sadly, it's the car that's destroyed in the first Iron Man movie. So um, absolutely lovely vehicle this is. But let me just show you this guide here. Now, I've gone right to the back first because it's actually detailing the Agora Advantage Club of all the other models you could order, like the Terminator, the Super Snake, the Bismarck's coming up soon, and obviously we've got the Cobra now. Uh, and when you do order from Agora Models, you have got the Agora Promise. Uh, that basically details the quality of parts, uh, the fact that everything is a full production, there's no trial builds of Agora Models, and they've got a brilliant customer service rating. So uh, check out their site here. Uh, let's show you what else we've got. This is all about the build here. As you can see, the car is 500 millimeters long, 230 millimeters wide. Uh, it's approximately seven kilograms and the details of it are absolutely amazing. Now, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna open this out because this opens out, as you can see, into a massive poster. As a matter of fact, if I hold that up for you, uh, that's what that looks like. And I'll tell you what, this is going in the workshop. So I need to get a frame for this and we'll go and put that in the workshop. Now I've got the pack here. Uh, the other things you do get, you do get a screwdriver in the pack and you also get a cleaning cloth, which is a little bit like one of the glasses uh, cleaners, for what I've been using these for, to be honest with you. So you will need a Phillips head screwdriver. For these builds as well, I also recommend sprue cutters, uh, a scalpel if we need to, need to cap details. The screwdriver uses a wearer PHO screwdriver. Uh, lots of screws to put in. I find the PHO is pretty universal for all the screws that we get. You will get spare screws in these packs as well. Keep your screws. So you might want to get yourself a pillbox or something uh, so you can keep those safe just in case you need them later on. Uh, and that's pretty much it. Sometimes we get some fiddly details. You might need some tweezers. But uh, let's show you what we got in pack one. Now these are in no sorts of order here. But as you can see, we've got uh, some of the tires here looking just like that. Uh, we've got the seats, which are all padded and foam, looking like that. We've got the bonnet, this is really impressive here. Check that out, and there's your free screwdriver there. And then we've got parts for the engine and exhaust. So we've got quite a few of them. One, we've got this one here. It looks like we've got the top of the engine block here. This is metal, just so you know, looking like that. And finally, another bit of the manifold and some of the exhaust there as well. Now there are six stages that we're gonna be building in pack one. So without further ado, let's get cracking. Okay, so this is pack one looking just like this. We'll get this open and I'll show you all the parts. Now when you open this, you'll be tempted to rip it apart, but you've got to be careful because there are some really tiny things in this. We've got two springs, as you can see this. We've got these little tiny round plastic things here, some rubber strips, and we've got these two uh, sort of like gold hinge brackets here. But uh, I do believe we only need two of these, so there's three in my pack. Uh, but make sure you've got all what you can see here uh, when you open that, because static will get, make it cling to the packet, and you don't want to be going chucking that away. Now this is where the cloth that they sent you is going to become invaluable, because we can actually rest this on the cloth like that, because this is the part that we need first. And what we're going to want to do is we want to going to put in some of these little tiny rubber strips just here, and here on the top. Now there's no dedicated place for these strips, but you just wanna make sure that they are symmetrical and uniform each side. Probably best to apply these with some tweezers as well. And all you gotta do is just peel off the adhesive on the back. And make sure this is straight and just put these on here. Now I'm using my tweezers to help me keep that straight and then fix that into position so there's the first one on looking like that let's do the second one again just take the adhesive strip off I'm going to 
to face me this time because I think that will be a little bit easier to put on for me. Put it down, make sure it's straight. And there we go, there's the second one on as well. Now what we want to do is we want to put the air intake over the top there. Now obviously this is metal, the air intake's plastic. It's got some lugs at the bottom, three lugs at the bottom there. They're going to go into these three holes here. So when it's on, it's going to kind of look just like that. But it's going to be secured from the other side with OPO2 screws. And as you can see, they are labelled up here. So we'll get these open. And this is why I use my uh, scalpel. <laughs> so what you do is you line up the holes here. And we get the first one in. I've only put them in loose at the moment, just so that I can make sure they're all lined up correctly. Here's the second one. And then lastly, here's the third one. And once that's in, tighten them up. Don't over tighten them because they're going into plastic. Just hand tight will be enough to and this one three and there we go that's the air intake on the bonnet there now we need to attach these hood handles now we have got a left and a right hand side now when we're thinking about the car if the driver's sitting here then this is the left side this is the right side now these are labeled just at the bottom there we've got a little r on this one and the other one has got l on it so what we need to do is we need to put these in the corresponding holes. So the left one is going to go in this side here, and the right one will be going in this side over here, just like that. But I'm going to work on one at a time, because this is going to get a little bit fiddly now. Once that's in, we're going to hold it upside down, just like that. We're going to put this little pin retainer in. So I'll put that over the top, just like this. And as you can see, that goes all the way down there. So that when I turn this, as you can see, it actually locks that into position there. We then need to take one of these little tiny springs and just put that over the top like that. And then on top of the spring, we're going to be putting one of these caps and then we're going to secure that all down with a screw. And the screw is an OP01 screw. So I'm going to get them all out because this has got the potential to ping off in all directions. <laughs> so what I do, I think it's best if you actually put the screw through this part first. And it does look like a little bit of a top hat. It's got a flange at the bottom of it. So you want to make sure the flange is facing down. So I'll put that in now. These are really tiny screws. Then put it on top of this part, compressing the spring with your fingers. And then just slowly screwing that in. As far as it will go. And there we go. That's now in place, looking just like that. We do the same on the other side here. So once again, I'm just going to line these up so they're exactly the same way around. Put this in here. Just like that. Then we put the little retaining clip over the top. Once again, we take a spring, put that over the top there. Then we get one of the little tiny OP01 screws. We'll thread this through, making sure it's the right way round into there. And then once again, holding that, put that at the top of the spring and then gently screw that into place. Again, doesn't have to be too tight. And there we go. And that's that one in as well. And as you can see, when I pull these, they turn to unlock. Now, when you do tighten these up, it's very important that as soon as you start feeling resistance, stop. You don't want these to be too tight. Um, otherwise, uh, you'll strip the threads and they won't hold themselves into place. But as you can see, that's all good. Uh, they have got spring on this side. So obviously, when these come up, they go down where they need to be. But that is all there is to do in that stage. We have got one part left over, which is basically the emblem looking just like this. We just need to keep this safe for a later stage. Now, this is stage two. We're going to be doing the wheel. Now, when we actually put the wheel in the rim, we're going to need to put the wheel in boiling water. So we'll do that as we're doing this stage. So I'm going to boil a kettle up. We'll have this ready to go, and I'll show you how to do that. So let's open this pack. And there we go. That's everything in this pack. So I'm just going to put that in boiling water. 
and this is what we've got left so let's get on with stage two the first thing we need to do is assemble the rims so we need this section just looking like that the chrome is brilliant on these and we also need the inner rim looking like that so all we're going to do is we're going to take this section and we're just going to put it in making sure that all four of these line up to the four bolt holes that you can see there and obviously the rim is going to fit flush into this section here so that's going to be screwed in with four of the op 03 screws and they look just like that so we get some of these open now these are silver colored screws so we'll put these in now and lock this into place that's the first one number two that's the third one and finally we've got this one here I just want to show you one of the details on this rim on this side uh, I don't know if you can make out but look you've got a little valve there I think that's a brilliant detail now we want to complete the other side of the rim by taking this side here and lining up these four holes with the four holes that we have left here so that's going to be going in like that it should fit quite flush so as you can see, we have got a seam on the outside. That's going to be hidden by the tire. Uh, but obviously, once it's in, you can't turn it. We're going to be putting the same screws, four times OP03 screws into these holes. So here's the first one. Here's the second one. Again, just do it so you can start to feel it being tight. You really don't need to go overboard tightening these up third one and last but not least here's the fourth one and there we go that is the rim completed so as you can see this has now been soaking in boiling water for probably about two minutes i think uh, about one or two minutes is probably the minimum that you want to put it in there and i've got a cloth here because this is going to get wet so what you want to do fish the tire out and then just push the rim into it. It should be hot enough that you should be able to get the whole thing in. As you can see, I'm revolving it around here now, pushing it into place. That's one side in, make sure it's on the other side. Simple as that. So I'm gonna dry this off, both sides. And there we go, that's the tire in place. Now the next parts we need are just this little hubcap and we need the free eared knock on looking like that and quite simply this has got a pin in there we're going to push that into the lug there it should be quite a snug fit so you don't need any glue or anything for that there we go that's in just like that then we need to take the brake disc which looks just like that we've got the brake caliper here and basically the thicker end this end here is just going to go down the center like that so that's looking there now the section which obviously houses the pads is just going to go over the two lugs we see there those two holes there just going to go over the top like that this is going to be held in with one screw it's got a lug that's helping us uh, put this into position on this side so put the screw in here all the way in nice and tight and as you can see that's now the caliper in place and that caliper should fit quite securely in there so it can't move but obviously the disc can so now all we're going to do is take this full caliper here and we're just going to put that into the indent we can see inside the rim there. Uh, you've got two little guide marks just on the top there. So we line these up. Make sure that fits flush in there. Just like that. Turn it over. We're going to be putting an OD02 screw just through there. So that's got a little flange on that. And put that into here again. Needs to be tight but don't over tighten it. So that's perfect so the calipers in there still able to move no problems at all there as you can see and then all we've got to do is just put the knock-on assembly just on the outside now we have got a magnet in here that's going to keep that into place but there we go that's that wheel completed now stage three looks just like that so we'll get this one open and what we need is the steering wheel. This is metal, it's very heavy as well. And we also need the Cobra emblem, which looks just like that. 
And all we're gonna do is push this into the holes here, ensuring it is the correct way up. So I'm just lining that up here and we'll push that into place. And there we go, that's the correct way up. Next, we've got a couple of exhaust parts to assemble. It's pretty easy to see how these go because as you can see, you've got sort of like a keyhole pattern there that's gonna match the uh, little muffler section here uh, as it looks like a key. So let's line this up, get this in, push it nice and firm so there's no gap in there and that's that exhaust piece completed. And that's all there is to do in this stage. But bearing in mind, these are the pieces that we're going to need to keep to one side. We've got like the roll cage, which will be going in far later. And we've also got the first seat. And look at the detail of this seat. Absolutely brilliant. It's cushioned. I can't wait to get that in the vehicle. Now pack four, we're gonna start assembling the air filter. This is what the air filter looks like. And we've got a metal grill wrapped in a bit of plastic here. So we get these out. Got my trusty uh, scalpel on that. And what we wanna do is we wanna put this around the outside rim here. So it's the same both sides. It doesn't matter what way around we do this, but uh, it's gonna be a little bit tricky. What I suggest is start it with your hands, getting a curve in there. Perhaps even use a former for this. Uh, a good former would actually be the uh, exhaust, thinking about it. I'm just gonna roll that round just to start it running. Now, if you're having problems getting that in, a simple fix for that is get the OP4 screws, which is what we're gonna use to actually put these down. Take the whole grill out and just assemble this, slide it up where it goes, and just put the screws in very, very lightly. And I'll put this one in here as well. Very light. So I'm still able to actually take the whole thing apart like that, as you can see. And then we can actually fit this in the rim. And then roll it round in our fingers to ensure this fits exactly where it needs to be. Keep rolling it round. You can hear it clicking into place when you're doing this. Like that. Get the last bit in there. And there we go. And then just tighten these screws up. I'm sure that is a far simpler way to do this. <laughs> there you go. That's why you come to this channel, to find the ways to do this simply. And there you go. That's that in. I love the detail on that. That grill is metal. Now we need to attach the first part of the carburetor. That's just gonna fit over this hole here, just like that. This is gonna be screwed in with an OP03 screw. So once again, I'll just line that up and we'll get this screw in here. This screw you do wanna make sure it's tight because you want that carburetor to be tight against the air filter there. Then we're gonna take the carburetor top and we're gonna be putting it on this way. So basically if we see this angle coming up we want to put this over the top just like that so that this bottom section here is facing there now this is going to be held in with two times op5 screws lots of screws so far in this build we're up to uh five different kinds at the moment and then i'll load up the second one look at the detail on this engine so far this is amazing okay and here's the second one looking just like that. Then we need the carburetor housing, which looks just like that. As you see, you've got a small hole for a lug there. We're just gonna put that lug there into it. That's gonna line it up for us. So it pops out the bottom like that and it's sitting on top. And then once again, we need to put a screw in here just to hold this into place. And that's just one of the OP03 screws. Just into the center hole there. And there we go, sitting in looking really good all we got to do then is put all of this on top of the engine block here looking like that so what we've got to do is as you can see we've got these sort of lug coming out that we pushed through and the bigger one there is just going to match the holes that we've got there 
So that's going to go on top just like that. Turn it over. It's going to be secured in with one screw just into that hole there. And once again, that's an OP03 screw. So I've got one of them here. And we'll screw that in. What an enjoyable build this is. I love how we're doing bits of the car uh, at different times, but we get to assemble things. So there we go. That's the carburetor and air filter sitting on top of the engine block. Now we're going to be assembling some more exhaust parts. So we want to take this one that we worked on at the last stage and we've got this end to put in looking just like that. Now, once again, this has got a little keyhole pattern at the top. It's going to match it, as you see, on this side here. So line it up. You don't want to be twisting these around because you will break the lug and just push it in till it's aligned correctly. Now, all of these smaller exhaust parts are labeled. So the one I'm holding here is number three. This one here is number one. Uh, let's have a look at this one. This one here is number four. Uh, which means this one should theoretically be number two, which it is. Now, the numbers they go into are actually labelled on this part as well, so it should be pretty easy to see how these go. So number one is going to go into the number one hole, pointing upright, just like that. Number four is going to go right next to it, pointing in the same direction, just like that. Then we're going to have the elbow number two, which is going to go into the number two, again, following the line of all the other pipes that we've just put in there just like that and the last one we've got to put in is number three and that again is going to follow the line of all the pipes just like this push that down so they're in looking just like that and then all we're going to do is we're going to put this end on to keep them all together making sure the raised corners are facing upright and they're just going to go over these manifold pipes into the holes here just lining all of them up that will keep this quite a sturdy part. There we go, they're all in. Push that all the way down. And there we go, and that's in. It should look just like that. And what with this, and what we've just done there, that's the end of this stage. So stage five, we're gonna do the oil filter and exhaust parts, so we get these out. And just like last time, the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna be putting this muffler end into the exhaust here making sure it's lined up correctly, just like that, so that's in. Now we can keep this to one side, we're not gonna need this again now. Now with the oil filter, it's gonna go into this keyhole pattern here. You see you've got the shape there. I've gotta just show you that we've actually got all of the detailing on the oil filter already done. I think that's a brilliant touch, that one. Uh, so the oil filter is just on top there. That's gonna be held in with an OP03 screw, which I've got here, just down the center console there to hold that into place. Tighten that up. And that's the housing in place. Then we just need to push the top on. Snug fit this one. But give it a good push and then that will fit on lovely. Then we're gonna be putting the spacer on. This is what the spacer looks like here. We need to make sure this is round the right way. So it's going with the larger side here, just away from the oil filter. Uh, you have got a lug hole here, which is gonna help to orientate it. So that's gonna go on top, just like that. And that's held in place once again with an OP03 screw. So I'll just get that through there. And there we go, that's all screwed in. And then we're going to use two more of the OPO through screws. We're just going to align this on the two holes there. That you can see there. So once this is over the top, just like that, that's how that's going to be held into place. So we put two screws in there now. I'll put in one very lightly there. Just so I can line up the other one at the bottom there. And once that's lined up, we'll just tighten these up completely. And there we go. That's the oil filter attached to the side of the engine. And what with those two sections, that's all there is to do in that stage. And the last stage here, as you can see, we've just got some more of the engine exhaust details exactly like we did last time. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna be putting this end into this end of the exhaust. Again, making sure it's lined up the correct way. We've got a keyhole pattern there, so push this in where it goes. 
And once again, we've got numbers on here, but this time the numbers are six, seven, eight, and nine. And when they're all in, they should look just like that. And then once again, we're gonna take the lip. It just goes to the top, making sure that the raised sections are facing up. And we're just gonna put all of these together. So just lining them up, sure that that's all pushed all the way down. And there we go, that's all completed. That means we've got two of these now, looking really good. So let's just put everything that we've done here and all the parts that we've got. So we've got this, we've got this. Some of these parts we haven't used and obviously we did the bonnet there. Let's just move this so you can actually see everything here and the tire and then not forgetting just over here, the engine top and the carburetor. And that was everything we've done in pack one. And wow, I really enjoyed that. That was quite detailed. I think the hardest bit on that was the exhaust pipes, uh, getting them lined up so they look just like that and they're all together. I um, think you're going to need your magnifying glasses for that. But when it is together, they look pretty impressive, doesn't they? So uh, I can't wait for pack two now. But once again, if you want to order this for yourself, I'll put the link down here for agoramodels.com uh, and you'll be able to get this. Check out some of their other models as well. You've got the Super Snake, the Terminator, and you can now register your interest in the Bismarck as well. But I really do hope you liked that video. If you did, please remember to give me a thumbs up. And if you haven't subscribed already, please remember to subscribe. Other than that, take care.